Hi everyone, I'm Sandy and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I have my October reading wrap up for you. It was an interesting month with a lot of different books. I also kind of went rogue on my TBR a little bit and read some things that weren't there. You know, it happens from time to time where a book strikes my mood and I just have to pick it up and read it. So very exciting because a couple of them are newer releases. So I'll get to talk about all of those today. Uh, so the first thing is to really kind of talk about my numbers for my 1001 book countdown. At the beginning of the month, I had 846 as my main number and for my 2023 number I had 15. So every year at the beginning of the year, I pre-select 52 books and I've slowly been working my way through them. I started the month at 15 and I'm not disappointed with where I ended up. I ended up reading four and DNFing one, which actually took my overall total down to 842 and my 2023 total down to 10. 10 is not bad, 10 is doable. I feel like I have a chance of getting those done. I do have videos already out about those books that I finished. So yeah, and I know I've already finished another one. So in November already, I had started it in October, finished it in November. So I'm, I'm feeling fairly confident, but there's a couple big ones still left on my list for 2023. I don't know. We'll see. All right. So after that book, the books that I had on my TBR, I had Caliban's War by James S.A. Corey. This is the second book in the Expanse series. I did talk about this book a little bit already in my sci-fi, my five sci-fi books in series that were getting me to love the genre. So if you want to know more about this particular book, please definitely go check out that video. I'll leave it linked in the description below for you. But this one was so much better better than Leviathan Wakes. I am now really starting to love the series. I can't wait to read the third book. Yeah, this one was a very big success. I did give it five stars in Goodreads. Unbelievable. So happy I read it. The next book that I finished was a buddy read with Jack over at Spread Book Joy, and we read the third book in the Lonesome Dove Quartet, which is Dead Man's Walk. This is the third book published, but the first one from a timeline order. So the characters that you meet in Lonesome Dove, some of them are in this, including the two main characters, Call and Gus. It was so much fun to be back in this world, back in the Westerns, with two very inexperienced rangers and Call and Gus as they're heading out on their first ever journeys as rangers. And they have a lot to learn <laughs> from these books. Larry McMurtry does such an amazing, amazing job of bringing in the atmosphere, the environment, the weather, and you just, I just really felt it. It just is one of those that you're like, wow, they're on this desolate plain um, called Dead Man's Walk, and it is horrific what they're going through. Food is sparse, water is difficult, there are all kinds of obstacles in their way trying to get somewhere. This book, the one issue that I had with this particular book is I did not get enough of the backstory of some of the other characters. So as we're going through the story and, you know, things are happening to different characters, I didn't have that emotional gut reaction that I had in Lonesome Dove when a character died. In this one, I didn't get that you know, intimate kind of backstory, and so it didn't hit me as hard as Lonesome Dove. Absolutely some amazing characters. I can't wait to read the final book, which is called Comanche Moon in this quartet, and then I kind of want to reread Lonesome Dove after doing that. But this one, you know, it was good. I would say the the second book, which was Streets of Laredo, was kind of, eh, this one was significantly better. If you want to read about Gus and Call's beginning in The Rangers, I would say definitely pick it up. I liked it. I didn't love it as much as, as Lonesome Dove, though. So that's my Cowboys. After that, I have three books. <sighs> that I didn't finish. So the first one I started and have put it on a temporary, not a permanent, a temporary DNF list. And this might come as a surprise because I know a lot of people recommended this series as another sci-fi series that I might really enjoy. And the book that I ended up not finishing was The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. I don't know if I just wasn't in the right frame of mind for this book. I started reading it with one of my friends. We got about a hundred or so pages in, maybe around that. And I just was like, I can't read any more of this right now. I need to put this away. I feel like this is timing related and not that it was because of a bad book. 
I don't DNF books very often, especially a permanent DNF. Permanent DNF is very, very rare, but I'm going to put this one aside for a while and come back to it when maybe I just feel like I'm in the right frame of mind for it. I was also reading Caliban's War at the same time and was loving that and just didn't quite get into the characters, but I am willing to give this one another go because everyone said that I they think I would really like this particular series. I also already have book two. Why do I have book two? I don't know. I bought it. <laughs> it's like I have a completest thing. I need to have every book in the series. There's actually three books, I believe, in this. I only have two. So, but that one I didn't finish. And then the other two books that were on my official TBR that I did not read either were The Fortnight in September and the Underground Railroad. I just didn't get to them. Um, I'm keeping them on my 2023 November, December TBR. Uh, there are a few of the books I'd like to prioritize, especially the Fortnite in September, because I've had it on the TBR for multiple months and I've not quite gotten to it. So we'll see. This one I'm going to keep, though, keep it close, where I, uh, the fifth season I'm just going to put away. These two I'll keep on my TBR shelf uh, and see if I can pick them up in the next couple of months and read them before the end of the year, because that's what I would like to do. This one was for my Discover New Author project, and this one was for my subscriber favorite project. So I actually have some newer releases that I also read. I read Learned by Heart by Emma Donahue. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about this particular one. It wasn't necessarily my favorite. I like the two girls and their relationship. Uh, I think Shelley Swearingen has a great video talking in depth about this book. I will leave that one linked in the description below for if you want to learn more about Learned by Heart. I just thought it was okay. It wasn't my favorite. But then I have a five-star read. <laughs> I ended up picking up all the Sinners Bleed by S.A. Cosby. You can see that this is a library book. I got this at the recommendation of one of my friends who said she loved this book. And then I started reading it on Saturday morning and then I finished it on Saturday night. I could not put this book down. This has a character whose name is Titus Quinn and he is a past football star, past FBI uh, analyst, FBI operative, whatever we would call him. And he ends up leaving the FBI under somewhat dubious circumstances and ends up coming home to Virginia where he runs for sheriff and is elected as one of the first black sheriffs in Virginia. And he is going through all kinds of stuff with being in Virginia. It ends up that there's an event at a school which has some very unfortunate outcomes from it. And then he ends up embroiled in this big investigation where he's trying to figure out what is going on with this particular person, with someone else in the school, potentially another person, and it is riveting. It pulled me in and I just could not put this book down. I had to find out what happened to Titus. I had to find out what happened to uh, everything else going on in the story. It, extremely, extremely good. I really appreciate how they handled different aspects of it and appreciated just Titus himself. He was a very cool kind of guy uh, who had went through a fair amount, unfortunately. But oh my gosh, I after reading this, I did go buy Razor Blade Tears by S.A. Cosby, which I have sitting over on my shelf, and I really want to pick that one up as well. But really, really like this one. I do believe I gave it either four and a half or five stars. Very, very good. So glad I read it, but oh man, it was it's a it's a tough one there's some trigger warnings with this i would encourage you to go research a little bit if that if there's anything in there that might um, be a problem for you but yeah such a good book i really really like this one last two i have one that i picked up for the tbr tackle which is hosted by sarah at freshly read books and jill at the book bully and that one was in the Lives of Puppets by T.J. Klune. The prompt, I think, was a character in a small village or a small environment. This one definitely qualifies for that because, as you can see on the cover of this book, there's all kinds of things up here in the trees. The premise of this book is that there is a young baby that is left in the woods with someone who is basically having to raise that child as their own. There's someone after the people that are dropping off this child to this person, and so you get that very much set up right away in the very, very beginning. I will say this is very sci-fi E. It has artificial intelligence. It has uh, sentient robots in it that are hilarious. I would say the robots in this particular book, especially the nurse robot and the cleaning robot, absolutely hilarious. I have never read about a story with such a sarcastic 
robot who has to engage her empathy mode in order to give different advice at different times. Oh my gosh. And the names of the characters are hilarious. So I'm not going to spoil that if you haven't read that. About the middle of the book, it kind of went in this weird deviation for me. And I didn't enjoy the second half as nearly as much as I enjoyed the front half. I enjoyed the found family kind of aspect that was there. You know, I'm a sucker for a good found family story. I love that part of it. I like those characters. Yeah, the middle to the end, it lost me a bit. It did. I'm not going to lie. I, I don't know if it's because it got more into kind of like this sciencey side of it. And it was just something that for me personally wasn't my favorite. But I do like TJ Klune. I've, this is the third book that I've read. Now I've read The House in the Cerulean Sea, uh, Under the Whispering Door, and now this one. I am enjoying TJ Klune's writing quite a bit. So I will read definitely more by this particular author. But In the Lives of Puppets, that's the robots. And the last book. Oh boy. This is where I said my TBR went off the rails. I didn't read the book as I was supposed to read. I read three books that weren't on my TBR. The last book is Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros, Fly or Die. This is the first book in a series. I don't know how many books are in the series, but I know the second book, Iron Flame, is coming out next week in November. So I ended up picking up this particular one because of the way someone that I know described it. And then I was like, okay, now I'm really intrigued. It is a fantasy novel very Hunger Gamesy kind of atmosphere to it in that children or young people are dying left and right as they try and maneuver through this particular school that they have to go to. So in this book, there is a main character who has been studying to be a scribe her entire life. There's four schools. One is writers, one is healers, I believe, and one is scribes. And I can't remember the fourth one because they don't talk about it very much. And she has been studying to be a scribe the entire time. And her father passes away and her mother, who is a major, who is a very important general, ends up saying, sorry, you're not going in scribe, you're going in writer. And writer, the percentage of people that die in the writer area is astronomical. And even the first thing to even get into the school is horrifying, harrowing journey to try and even get into where you could have a class. And then once you get there, she has a huge target on her back because of who her mother is. And there are people who want to befriend her, but there's also people who are very upset with her mother and uh, upset with her mother and things that happened in previous engagements. And so she's battling all of that while trying to stay alive in this very difficult environment. The threats are everything from other students to instructors to you just you're falling off of something that you're supposed to be climbing to the dragons themselves and the whole lead up to it is that basically in the writer school you want to become a writer of a dragon if you don't end up having a dragon bond with you that's also not good uh, but even if you have a dragon bond with you you can still die death and destruction really were everywhere in this particular book and like i said it had kind of a hunger gamesy kind of feel to it because of how much the kids were you know, injuring almost each other all of the time the dragons were probably my favorite part of this book i really enjoyed the aspects of the dragons the more the dragons were in the book. I really like that. I will say too that in the beginning of this book, there's only references to sex in it. There's not you know, necessarily anything graphic showing up. And then you hit the two thirds mark and it is as graphic and as explicit as the raziest romance novel I have ever read. I mean, it is 100% out there <laughs> as far as those scenes go. And it as especially since some, how someone had described it to me, I was expecting it kind of earlier in the book. And then when it did come, I was like, oh my goodness. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. It is definitely a lot when you get to that. So just be aware of that. You're going on along and it's just all about dragons and everything. And then all of a sudden you're in way too much. <laughs> so that part of it was definitely a bit shocking. Um, would I say the writing is good? Not necessarily. Would I say it's necessarily a great story? No, not really. Did I have a lot of fun reading it? Absolutely. It was complete mind candy. It's similar to like when I read my military romance novels. I Those ones that I can just go in and read and not worry about character development, plot, or really anything along those lines. 
I am just reading it for 100% the sheer enjoyment of just putting my kind of my brain aside and just reading it. And so I am going to read the next book. I've debated pre-ordering it since it's going to come out in November. I have it on hold at the library uh, for whenever I get it. I don't know when that would be, but Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. If you want just kind of some brain candy, this is not a bad one for that, but is it, is it excellent? No. Is it fun? Yes. So that's the last book that I have on my October reading wrap up. You know, a big mix. I had, I had a Western. I had a, I had sci-fi with In the Lives of Puppets. I had fantasy with Fourth Wing. I mean, I was all over the place. I had classics in there. It was a really eclectic reading month, but I had a lot of fun in there and so many wonderful books. A really fun month, really fun reading month. I'm really looking forward to picking up some of these other ones. Have you read any of these? Please let me know in the comments down below or just leave me a, a leaf emoji maybe um, if you don't feel like leaving a comment. I love hearing from everyone, but as always, like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, everyone, thanks, bye!